Hey everyone, it's Steve here. I'm going to be running through a few things that we covered in the Vector Deep Dive this morning. Uh, just a bit of revision. I'm going to be looking at drum sequences and external modulation of them to create fills and a bit of an improvised feel. We're also going to be looking at uh, clocking a melody from an external source. We're also going to look at using velocity outputs to push some samples around in Morphogene. And the focus of this is going to be also to demonstrate the scenes function within the Vector and Launchpad integrations. So first up, I'm going to shut up for a minute and then just play through a couple of scenes that I've got organized here. And after that, I'm going to pull apart how it all sort of works. Now, keep in mind that the eight rows here refer to the eight parts on the vector. Um, these particular red and greens here show the different mute and active states of each scene. And these purple pads are the scene selections. Now, if you look over on the screen here, you can also see them in the scene mode. And if I use Encoder 9 and dial it, you can see that my cursor is moving around on the launch pad as well. And when I press down on Encoder 9, it switches to that particular scene. Of course, I can just do this as well, but it's just nice to point out how they work together. Okay, so without further ado, Alright, so there's a fair bit of variation between those uh, different scenes and the combination of parts. And you would have seen me doing some other things with my left hand over here on Maths Channel 3 and also the Euclidean circles here. So let's just go through one scene at a time. The first scene is, is a basic drum beat. I had the kick muted then, of course, because you can mute channels. Right? Then we move to scene two. So scene two, as with many of the others, scene two is sending a trigger out to Morphogene and it's telling Morphogene to play a sample. There's another particular part within the vector that I've got sending velocity outs. Let's have a look. This one. So as part of this particular part, I'm sending velocity out and it's sending it to the Morphogene Organize input. So as it steps through the different velocity settings, it's telling it to change the sample that it's playing. One of them is playing chords. The other is the same chords with an embellishment over it. And the third one is the same chords with a slightly different embellishment over it. So using the velocity outs from the vector, I'm telling the Morphogene to increment those samples. Scene three is the piano, the basic drum part we heard, plus another layer of drum parts on my assimilator. So 
So what I'm so what I'm doing there is I'm using uh, the continuous voltage on maths, and I'm dialing in to the modulation input, so external input. And you can see that my modulation one or external one is modulating length very aggressively. And it's also external one is modulating my ratchet in a less aggressive way. Let's demonstrate that. You can see up to eight steps is being played now on drum part two. Now watch the launch pad. So the way I've got it set, when I turn the volume, th sorry, channel three of maths counterclockwise, it's moving to basically shorten the length of the part or the preset. And if I go as hard left as it'll go, it actually introduces the ratchet. And it's gone back to... If I go back a little bit to the counterclockwise, it's shortening the pattern. And all the way to the left, getting those ratchets in. So the next part of interest is uh, scene five. Just basically the same drum beat. With the bass line. Now the one thing I have done there with that drum is I've put a chance operator on the seventh step. Now you'll notice if you watch carefully that it's not doing anything. Because if it was doing something, if that was working, it would jump back to step three. Jump three. Why isn't it working? Because, whoops. Modulation. I'm using external one again for probability. And if I don't do anything with that mass channel three knob, it's not going to create a probability that the jump will be active. So let's do it again. So you can see it gets stuck in a loop. The only way it gets out of the loop is because I have a reset. Now the next um, scene I've got, so basically what I'm doing there is I'm using that, again, the continuous CV control to modulate my chance operator within the drum part and I'm causing basically an offset of the kick, which then every four bars it, it's, it's locking back into the one again. Okay, so scene six is similar to the previous ones. It's got the bass line in it and the piano, but I've just cut that out for now. And what's happening is it's also using my branches or a twigs, which is a branches clone, to spit the uh, triggers out for one part between a sample and then to rings. So you can hear that.
so this is a bit of a fun one because what's happening is for this particular part I've got basically the pitch data into the part but it's decoupled from the other patterns in that I'm not using the, the gates or triggers internally to the vector to make it progress. What's actually happening is my Euclidean circles has an output that's going into the trigger 3 input on the jack expander and whenever um, a trigger is received on the trigger 3 input on the jack expander it progresses the sequence by one step. So if you've got a Euclidean circles or a Turing machine or a disting or anything like a, a mutable instruments grids any of those things that throw out triggers you could connect it to triggers 1 to 6 inputs on the jack expander and you can use it to increment through a sequence. You could use it with a drum beat, with chords, I'm just using it for a monophonic pattern. So just watch carefully. Now the benefit of doing this over say just using a quantized pitch material and some triggers, and that's a great way to do things too, but the good thing about this is I have set pitch data every time. I'm going to hear the same order of notes, but rhythmically I can modulate it, which I think is pretty cool. Um, the way that you set that up is you go to global, route, go to the jack expander triggers page and you can see trigger three has external set. That means on trigger three, I'm expecting an in incoming signal rather than pumping one outwards like the rest of them. And again, I go back to my timing mode, and it's trigger input 3, and trigger input 3 set to external. It's that easy. So we've covered rather a lot here, okay? We looked at it ostensibly to look at the vector sequencer scenes mode using launchpad integration or just natively on the vector. But we also looked at drum parts and using external modulation into modulation inputs on the vector to change the length and also introduce ratcheting. We also looked at using external modulation to modify probability. So anything you have a chance operator for you could use external modulation to affect the probability those chance operators are going to occur. That's pretty cool. And then we looked at using an external uh, trigger device as a clock for a particular part or a preset to run through each step based on that external source. So we've covered rather a lot there. If you have any questions, hit me up. Thanks for watching.